Possession was originally released in 1981 and quickly vanished from view, popping up in art houses now and again, but essentially relegated to cult status. A new print is being shown with a retrospective of the director's work in a nationwide tour currently housed at CineFamily in Los Angeles. The film begins at the end of a marriage in Cold War era Berlin and watches with fascination as the couple, played by Sam Neill and Isabella Johnny, descend into paranoia, loathing, murder, and a few things I know you're not going to find in the dictionary. The style of writer and director Andrzej Zulowski in this film has been described tactfully as hysterical. There are a lot of great entrances in this movie, but the exits are even better. Characters head out the doors and downstairs screaming, bleeding, and flailing against walls, ending up in tears, in pieces, and in refrigerators, crashing motorcycles and taxis, and even taking one very nice swan dive off of a spiral staircase. By the film's home stretch, the viewer is neck deep in screams, beatings, and fluids of every origin, but the characters have emerged to share in some wild-eyed state of grace listening with wonder at the sustained note of their own otherworldly madness and finding it starkly beautiful. In other words, this is a great date movie. For anyone who's ever been in a long-term relationship, all of this must sound vaguely familiar. And no wonder, Zolovsky wrote it in the midst of a nasty divorce, calling it his only autobiographical film, and he married it with almost complete success to his feelings about Europe on either side of the Iron Curtain circa 1981. He has that absurdity unique to Central Europe, the morose humor of Kafka and Gogol, Polanski and Yaroslav Hysek, none of whose names I'm pronouncing correctly, I'm sure. They seem to be comfortable with undisguised human horror, mildly reporting from its most horrid depths and peppering their dispatches with some of the driest humor you'll ever sample. It seems no one saw that in 1981, and hardly anyone saw the film itself. Despite a Johnny winning the French Caesar and Cannes Film Festival Awards for Best Actress, Possession was declared a video nasty in the UK, putting it in the company of such films as Cannibal Holocaust, I Spit on Your Grave, and The Evil Dead. In the United States, an uncut version wasn't even available till the 1999 DVD release, and it's still a hard find with a hefty price tag. Which is unfair. It's gruesome, but we've seen worse. The likely culprit here is the intensity of the performances. There's an extended, almost unbroken sequence in a tunnel with a Johnny delivering some of the gutsiest, most potent acting you will ever see. It is a moving and dreadful sequence that comes straight from the raw beating heart of what horror means to me. A thing alive in you and me, in our pulse and our nerve endings. Not some easy labeling of good and evil, but the sense of horror itself. The gaze turned inward against one's own will, forcing the human to see itself exposed as a monster, irrational and lashing out in all directions. Maybe the censorship pinheads of the US and UK feel this in their gut. An honest thing is, and always has been, the ultimate transgressive act. So guys, uh, what'd you think? Did you see? Did you guys? Did everyone see this movie? Uh, yeah, uh, real I quick, saw it. Bill, can you can you repeat all that, please? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just, I just put that stuff this way. Me... <laughs> Man, I mean, I think the ultimate irony is that yeah, I mean, it's a film that really requires you to have a really. Uh, good clean viewing of it and by that i mean you can't be watching it on your laptop in a hotel room or in an airport or anything like that you know i mean it's a film that demands your attention yeah and the only way that i was able to get my hands on it to watch this was uh on a laptop you know to download a pirate copy which was a bad dvd rip i mean it's it's terrible man and, and i had yeah i had the same the same thing joe and immediately when i began watching it i was pissed because i'm like man i should not be watching this on the computer i know man you should be in a theater or yeah. i mean or in, at least in the comfort of you know your home with it i yeah uh, i got I that, that, that that scene at the beginning when he's talking to those five people behind the desk in that in that large room and they're like cornered i'm like well, i can't i'm like i can't watch this on the computer i'm like i'm not doing myself or the <laughs> i'm not doing anyone any favors exactly, man. I, I actually watched it twice because i tried to burn it onto a dvd and the riff, the original riff that I got was so bad that the DVD was so, the voice was so out of sync, so distracting, man. And I sense that it's a film, it's a film that you, can, you, you really need to pay attention to, to even begin to start to comprehend and appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, I, and then I watched it again and it was in, on a laptop and it, the syncing wasn't as bad, uh, you know, wasn't as off, but the picture wasn't so good. You know what I mean? And I, I just, it, it's just a, it's just a, a real shame, you know. 
Well, the one question I do want to ask, Bill, is uh, where, I mean, where did you come, come across this film uh, originally? You know, I don't even remember. It's one of those things that uh, probably internet browsing has something to do with where, you know, you click on a link that leads you to an article that leads you to another article, that kind of a thing. Uh, and I eventually got a copy of it, uh, as, you know, usually happens from a friend who had a DVD uh, copy of it. Uh, from the 1999 release and I was pretty blown away and you know the fact that it's not uh, widely distributed and the fact that uh, it's in a very small retrospect uh, retrospective traveling across the United States right now really says something and for anyone mm -hmm. uh, who's interested you really should try to dig this movie up uh, in in you know in a town near you um, by the time this podcast airs it's going to be in Los Angeles uh, it was just in uh, New York. It'll be moving to Philadelphia. Uh, it's basically going to be making the rounds uh, around the country. You really should go to the theater and try to see this. Um, it, it's a genuinely horrifying experience, but in this weird, uh, hyperkinetic, exalted way. Um, I mean, I, I really, I do categorize it as horror. Um, it is horror. What is. do you guys think? How, how, well, did you feel that yeah, it even belonged I'm in gonna, that category? I'm going to tell you right, right off the bat. I don't know what it was, but as soon as I started watching the film, I, I like, I'm, I'm asking myself, why am I f frightened immediately? For what reason? And I was saying to Joe earlier that it reminds me the feel of it. It's much more visual than this guy's work, but it reminds me of the way Haneke handles his storytelling. Absolutely. And I, Michael Haneke, that is. And it right away, gave, the first time I saw a Michael Haneke movie was I saw the American version of Funny Games. And, this is, and that was the most disturbing hour and 40 minutes I think I've ever spent in my entire life. And when I put Possession on, I was getting that same chill throughout my body, that same sense of uneasiness, you know, just that unsettling feeling, man. And Well, in the, the, for me, the reason for that is that these are mature uh, um, intellect, not intellectual, but they're, they're filmmakers who go for uh, a psychological realism that it comes from real life and it disturbs you on a personal level in a way that cheap gore just isn't going to do it, well it's you, it, know? It, you know the the emotion is all real but the way that it's presented is in a way it's almost sur it's very much surreal you know so absolutely but, yeah I it's mean, a heightened state of he 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 takes a scene and finds the emotional center of it and then cranks it up uh, you know, really high and has these weird twists on it that just make you yeah. feel like you're in a nightmare. Yeah, like, yeah, like why were they sitting like back to back at that cafe? I mean, just like things like that was just so bizarre. It's like it's they, so like, off putting, like, but there's, yeah, so, there's, there's, there's a like, truth to it, though. You yeah, know what I mean? There's a truth to it, absolutely. <clears throat> like, there's a, the, like, that them sitting back to back at the cafe is the visual equivalent of what yes. a normal conversation would be of between those two when they were sitting if they were sitting for, you know facing each other mm -hmm. you know and I, I, did you guys notice how many shots the Berlin Wall was in the background yeah, I did uh, yeah I did which yeah. you know which shot which is another part of the sort of the mise en scene of, of duality the like there's like a whole duality thing there because yeah, yeah so uh, yeah I, I kind of got that because at that particular uh, point in history there was the east it was the germany was separated east east and west germany and then you're watching uh a movie that i think you know and again i only got to see the first 56 minutes well it's so much about the separation between those two the war that's yeah, between, between them those two but people. not only that but what I, I think it was getting to was that there was you know when i saw that the teacher was the same actress you know from the kid's school mm -hmm. you know there was some duality going with with uh with uh, that with the with the wife, and I was thinking to myself that, yeah, that but, but it was that. but it was the guy. I was thinking to myself, well, this guy might be taking, you know, he might be thinking in his mind that the woman from the school is like the perfect idea of what his what he wants his wife to be. And that's it, yeah, man, because that's what that's what and, and she happening. creates the perfect version of him in the monster, you know. Wow. Yeah, and there, and there, it, you know, there's a, it's that symbolism that's in there that reminded me of um, the El Topo guy and yeah, Santa yeah. Sangre, uh, Alejandro, yeah. Jar, Jar, uh, Jar, 
Uh, Joe, that's Joe. Just take your time. We'll wait. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? What's his name? Not on his own team, Joe. 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 Joe Dorofsky. <laughs> it's like Andre. Andre's Andre. Andreofsky or something. Is that what it is? Uh, I, listen, I. I am. I, you know, I'll speak for everyone right now. Let's. Let's just call him the El Topo guy. <laughs> I think it's Jodorowsky. <laughs> There you go. Jodorowsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Max, you ever see El Topo? <clears throat> no, I haven't. I want to. It's on my list, yeah, but I was yeah. I would yeah, think it's, it's a midnight it's part of the whole midnight movie madness, you know, uh, you know, along with Eraserhead, Night of the Living Dead and and yeah. Water and, and, and it should be noted for everybody out there that this film Possession is very much in that same tone as I I mean it has that same bizarre, surreal, abstract symbolism of Racerhead and El Topo and just really strange films like that. Um, I guess, you know, and, and like some of those films, it has some really gruesome, uh, gross horror stuff, you know, at its core. Yeah, absolutely. Max, uh, I'm just going to assume you, you haven't seen this film yet? No, I haven't, but I was really compelled by two points. Um, the, the first point was you said it personally, you know, quote unquote, um, disturbed you or offended you. Not offended. What did you say? It disturbed you on a, on a personal level. Mm -hmm. That excites me because I'm a cinematic masochist for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And my second point is case in point. My wife for Christmas, Merry Christmas, gets me the... Um, Oh, what it, uh, the Criterion Collection edition on Blu-ray of uh, Pasolini's Salo, or the 100 oh my God. Days of, so of Sodom. Now, this is where you have to decide if this is horror or not, and I love that you guys are trying to figure it out. And that, to me, is a sincere horror film in many, many ways. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's you know, I think it's a tremendous absolutely. work of art, but it's also going to take you down. Well, and that's great when a film is so rooted in genuine horror and insists on staying there and digging as deep as possible, uh, you know, and making making a work of art out of it, making a great film out of it. Um, it can't help but be horrifying on on levels that you're not accustomed to. Yeah, because it doesn't horror. become it doesn't become a slave to genre it's not convention. It's simply exploitative. It, yeah, and and it doesn't and especially with a film like this or some of the other films you, we've been talking about in in relation with it, it just doesn't feel like it's tied down to you know the conventions and the devices of horror. Yeah. You know, and and and, but in a lot of ways, it's more of a horror film than some of those films because it it disturb. It's more disturbing and, and horrifying. Its gen well. its motive is is to deeply disturb you and to horrify you, which is, you know, which it carries uh, consistently throughout. Max, the other thing I wanted to say, if you can, you're in L.A. and this film is, is coming your way. Uh, I can't recommend you see it enough uh, because uh, in conjunction with the discussion about channeling, there is... Um, uh, Isabella Johnny had a nervous breakdown after this film and, and she's a bit of a diva and said that it took her, you know, seven years to recover from this performance. There is, um, her acting is otherworldly. It is something else. There is a, the scene that I mentioned, uh, in my review, um, is one of the most amazing things ever committed to film. And it's, I, I really get the feeling that what, what you were talking about and what Joe was talking about at the end of that day of shooting, I think everyone went home and sat down and said, what the hell just happened? That, that was, that's that, that uh, was something else. That's that, uh, in the underground tunnel the, or whatever. The tunnel. Yeah. 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 And I, right. you just, you know, everyone, it's not, if you haven't seen the film, it's not even worth a spoiler. Just go find this movie, you know, do what you got to, to, to watch it. But, uh, Max, you'll, you'll watch that and you'll totally, uh, appreciate it. Hey, no shit, no shit. I've got goosebumps right now. No shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it is. It's really amazing. Hey, Billy. Uh, speaking of that horror, you know, at the at the root of it, we you, you didn't touch too much on um, the you know the the root of the horror in the subject matter and the text of that film, which is, I mean, you did. It's the horror of the of between a, a man and a wife. And yeah. I know, wrote, yeah, I yeah. wrote that. Yeah, that's what I wrote. Horror in relationships. Yeah. That's the center of my notes. It just says yeah. horror in relationships. Yeah. And, and they use the title, <laughs> they use the, they use the title possession, 
you know, and it's uh-huh. so directly related to um, what's happening on screen with their relationship. You know, I was just curious what your your thoughts on that were, as far as you know, the major theme in in that film. I was I was pretty struck by it, and and obviously this is a film that's a, a little bit of a, a puzzle. So you try to you try to put together the symbols and and come up with yeah. a picture. You know what I mean? Well, I guess I wonder if you're referring specifically to the title uh, of Possession or uh, the uh, the sort of surprise uh, that comes about halfway through the movie. Um, well, specifically the title Possession and it not being so much about the possession of, you know, this woman being possessed, although it could be for that. But, you know, I, I sort of felt that the, the Possession title had more to do with these people uh, ownership struggling to possess one another and what yeah to I, to each other you know the uh, years ago when i first watched it i had that had not struck me this time it came out in a big way because again you know uh without getting too much into the political subtext mm-hmm. it's it's about capitalism and communism on either side of the berlin wall you know obviously that was a big theme um but the way the characters talk about each other trying to own each other and trying to control each other is absolutely i mean it was a pretty glaring theme throughout on on this viewing definitely yeah that, it, what, what thoughts did you have on that joe yeah absolutely man i, I mean i i'm a huge fan of trying to parse you know th- the underlying meanings of things is probably, I guess you guys know, and most other people who are listening right now know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, she, you know, they, they just go to, it, it's all there where, um, see, I, 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 this time around, I actually saw the title as a noun, uh, in that the husband viewed the wife as a possession and he was struggling with letting go of that man, concept, absolutely. you know, and and, and I think that's, it got that's it, obvious, yeah. it got even deeper than that. Like the 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 wife's friend said, uh, or no, no, um, the the teacher was saying, freedom to you is uh, like a poison or something like that, you know, yeah, because he couldn't even con- conceive of himself being free. So exactly, how could he let her be free and be her own person? I mean. It's, uh, it's so, it, it, the roots are so deep. I mean, you could, you know, if I, I took better notes, I could, we could probably discuss it there's, in pretty great detail, you know, on how that relates. Some, yeah, I mean, there's some absolutely stunning, beautiful lines in this movie. One of my favorites, uh, sort of related to that, is um, uh, Sam Neill saying, uh, someone asks him about God, and he says, for me, God is a disease. Mm-hmm. And the person replies, that's why through disease we can reach God. Yeah, Heinrich. Yeah, I reckon. And I mean, there's so many things to talk about this movie, yeah. man. The performances across the board I'm so, are I'm out so, of this I'm so like, ticked that I, I only I, got like, 56 minutes in. Yeah. And it was even, di- it was so difficult to watch. I do want to say, though, gentlemen, that Isabel at Johnny is, is her name. She made yes. two films that year, and the other film was Abel Ferrara's Miss 45. All right, horror fans, sorry for the interruption. But I have to warn you that our fearless leader, Tomahawk, Mr. Black Belt Sarcasm Ninja himself, really screwed up regarding the comments he's making about the co-star of Possession. Despite what Mr. Know-It-All would have you believe, she did not, I repeat, she did not star in Abel Ferrara's Miss 45. So everything you're about to hear in the following exchange is an unequivocal falsehood. Sadly, this is due to our King of Sarcasm's failure to check his facts properly. It's my duty, as the audio editor of this podcast, to inform you of this. I, of course, derive no pleasure from it whatsoever. And now back to our program. And that same year she did Miss 45 with that character, and then she does Possession, both in 1981. Jesus Christ. I guess that's enough to lead to a nervous break. That would do it right there. I couldn't even imagine spending five minutes with Abel Ferrara. (laughs) Have you ever heard him do commentary? Yeah, I've met the guy. It's He's the best. In, yeah, you have? Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine. Yeah, works uh, as as uh, was a police officer in New York, and he worked on a couple of Ferrara's movies. And we were at a bar one time, and I couldn't even understand a word the guy was saying. Uh, like he was, it was like a troglodyte. It was bizarre. I, I don't know how he puts these. Some some of his films are brilliant i mean bad lieutenant is brilliant king of new york is brilliant I, it's just I, I was amazed that that this was the same guy that puts these films together you guys is that, is that next episode yeah we're doing ferrara on episode oh, you, I, have to, I have to be on ferrara because i love that fucker so much 
The King of New York commentary. Here's just a quick example. All right, he's Chris Walken walking in. Look at this motherfucker. Look at Chris Walken. He's a fucking guy. He'll do anything. He fucking ask him. Look at this fucking. Look at look. He just raised his fucking hand. He's gonna slap that fucking bitch. Look, he just slapped her in the fucking face. That's your commentary when you get. Yes. It. <laughs> oh man. On like it, like on the set of King of New York when Abel Ferraro was discussing a scene with Christopher Walken. No oh, boy. What? <laughs> Max, that's your next yeah. YouTube video right there. <laughs> Max, uh, yeah, you got <laughs> yeah, Ferrara, like what you should do is have any of your characters. <laughs> just have any of your characters being directed by Abel Ferrara. Like, I you know, love that actually. Like Ferrara, like directing like like Gandolfini, you know, with, with, with or whatever, you know, you could do any of those guys. Just, like, you know, make... I, I'm rebellious enough that I might do that because <laughs> I love Ferrara so much. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's in, yeah, we are. Max, like I said, we're doing them on episode four, man. It's, it's going to be, uh, we're doing, uh, what are we doing, guys? Driller Killer and, uh, and The Addiction. Oh, man, that's good stuff. What did I give you, Max? Ted Bundy and Dahmer. <laughs> you give me Dahmer and Bundy. I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't get the Ferrara account. Oh, man. Oh, boy. I, You'll figure this thing out eventually, Tom. I, <laughs> I'm doing the scheduling. I don't even know. You Let's know. do uh, Ferrara Part 2 down the road. And, oh. um, yeah, there's, so, there's so much to cover. I mean, seriously. Uh, they're, they're really he only fun. makes horror films. Yeah. I mean, come on. It, his films take place in hell. Every single one of them. I mean, would you consider Bad Lieutenant horror? No, not so much. But boy, is that a fucking beautiful, sad, powerful work, man. I just like, I try to show, show it to people, and they just are like, why are you showing me this? You know, how, so oh, sick. really? I've been watching yeah. that film since I was, Joe, remember we used to watch it when we were like 20 years old? Yeah, when you were a young Republican. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> When when Harvey, oh, I don't. Where know. were you? Where the fuck were you? When Harvey, oh, that was. Good. My friends are laughing. Oh man, I it, it's I still again I like to put Bad Lieutenant on at least once a year. You know, I, I it, it's I think you know, and it's hard to really go and say anything like this. You know, I know it's a little, you know, it's a little bit too much, but it, it might be one of you know might be the best acting performances ever, man. You know. Oh. With, it, it really, it's arguably the best. Uh, it's I I, it, I can I can't even put into words how impressive it is, man. I, I think it I think it totally fits the theme of the evening with the channeling. I think Kaitel went so fucking deep and he gave yeah. it so hard that when he snapped out of it, he probably didn't even remember doing it. Yeah, yeah kind, kind of like really uh, Isabella Johnny with with uh, possession. I mean, she told a French magazine that it took her several years to get over playing the the role of Anna. You know, and it it I, I it's <laughs> it's it's very my nipples are hard. You know. <laughs> hey, well, Billy, thank you, man, for that because I I just have a new director to to track down and 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 look into, man. Definitely. And, uh, so I thank yeah. you, but uh, Susie does not thank you, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, you didn't if, think it was good relationship therapy? <laughs> you know, man, we we loved you watched uh, it. You watched it with your wife, Joe? Yeah. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> you know, the, the print was so terrible. I mean, the, the disc, we tried to watch it on my TV, and it was so bad. It was so distracting, man, and I don't blame her. You know, she's usually, I mean, we sat down, and we watched every episode of uh, Ingmar Bergman's Scenes from a Marriage, and, and we had some therapeutic catharsis on watching <laughs> that. But this movie, you know, this movie, we, I mean, it was just, she fell asleep. She couldn't, I, it was just so it was just such a terrible disc, man. And it's just, just such a travesty that you, you, in this age, you can't access a film like that, but you can, you know, yeah. you, you could get, you know, Jim Carrey's last penguin movie. All you know, yeah. Time you want. <laughs> yeah. Or episodes of the Jersey Shore. Oh yeah. Yep. You can go it's right on to Netflix and you can just start pounding those out one, one after another. Mr. Popper's penguin. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Popper's penguin. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to see, Mr. Popper's Penguin, to not Kaitel's we're, dick. We're reviewing that on episode five, and you're, you're welcome to come on. Yeah, Mr. Popper. 
<laughs> fucking Mr. Popper can fucking eat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Billy, thanks a lot for uh, the review. And, guys, thanks a lot for talking about Possession. And, and, and hopefully uh, our listeners will go out and, and seek the film. It's definitely the, the 56 minutes I, I got. It's so worth it. And I can't wait to finish watching it and then rewatch it. Uh, next up, gentlemen is our first part of our classically themed review portion of the show. We're going to be taking a look at David Jacobson's 2002 movie, Dahmer, starring Jeremy Renner. And the man to introduce this film is none other than Joe Mummy. Do it, Joe. 